Welcome. My name is Jose Oconda. I'm a Chattanooga-based web designer and Webflow developer. And in this video, we're talking about drawers. Um, so drawers are uh, kind of like hidden content that scrolls in from the side of the website to give you more information about whatever it is that you're learning about. And they're really useful for a number of things. Um, in this example, uh, this is just a really small section I built out for like a coffee company where uh, their coffees are presented here and you're clicking on them to learn more. But they're also helpful for things like team member profiles or uh, you could even use this if you wanted to build your own cast custom, your own custom navigation bar that has a hamburger menu and um, hidden drawer uh, for the navigation. So this is a really useful technique. So I'm excited to share this with you guys. Uh, again, we're going to be building out this little section here in the background. We're going to be building out the drawer and how to make sure that the content is scrollable. And then we're going to be using Interactions 2.0 so that we can get the drawer to slide in. And by clicking either on the X or on the body of the website, we can get that drawer to slide right back out. Uh, so I hope you're excited about this a topic. I am and I'm ready to get started. Let's do this. All right, so we're gonna get started by building out the section that holds all of the product cards. And then part two will be adding the drawer and all the animations that make it work. So um, let's jump into the designer here. I'm gonna click Command E to bring up the search toolbar and then um, add section and then hit Command Enter. That will automatically help me to get to the selector so that I don't have to click on it every single time. And I'm just gonna call it sections to make things easy. And then I'm going to give it a height of minimum 100 VH. The reason I did minimum instead of height is because by minimum, it's going to ensure that no matter what the content is in this section, that section will at least be the full height of the browser. But let's say I add content and that content is larger than 100 VH. That's okay because the section, since it's set to minimum, it's going to grow or expand along with the content. If I set it, to height 100 VH, what that means is that um, if the content exceeds that size, any content um, beyond that is considered overflow and it will cause some layout issues where uh, the product cards will overlap the content below it or the section below it. Um, so by setting it to minimum, uh, we're making sure that we're kind of getting the best of both worlds. It's at least the height of the browser, but it will grow if it needs to. Um, I'm going to hit escape and hit the up arrow to get to the body and click on body all pages. And then I want to set the background to my linen color and add that little bit of texture. Um, uh, here we go. I'm going to set it to cover, center, do not tile, and fixed. Um, so just to give it that kind of like burlappy texture that um, uh, we associate with coffee. Inside of that section, I'm going to add a div block, hit command enter, and name it my container. And up here, I'm going to set the width to 85%, a maxed width of 1,320 pixels. And you'll notice it's kind of hard to tell, but it's aligned left. If I just hit this little button right here, it automatically centers the content. And then we're going to add a couple of things. We're going to add a text block, a heading, and I'd like to maybe heading two because this is technically a section. And then we're going to add a paragraph. Um, then with my section selected, we're going to add 100 pixels of padding on the Y axis. And uh, uh, what I should have done actually is add a div block and add our um, heading content inside of there. And then with the div block selected, create a new class called max width of 500. And there we go. Um, so let's just uh, type in a random <laughs> globally sourced coffees. And then we can call this um, our beans <laughs> or something like that. Um, and then this is a little bit of lorem hipsum. If you go to hipsum.com, uh, this is kind of like a funny take on lorem ipsum. Um, and we do need to fix this. We're gonna give this a class of overline. 
people call it overline or preheader or whatever you like. Um, I believe it's all caps, bold, two pixels of letter spacing. I think it's our kind of like brown color. And I think that's it actually. Um, okay, great. With the section selected, uh, let's make it position relative. And what that means is that um, in a minute, I'm going to add my coffee beans photo and um, position it absolutely. And anything that you set absolutely, it's kind of like searches for the next available parent element that's set to relative. And it kind of um, positions itself according to that. Um, so we're going to add a image, make it our coffee beans. Um, hit command enter and call it coffee beans image and we're going to make it about um, 50 VW or viewport width and then position absolute um, and then uh, to the top right and then I do want to kind of bring it up so that the first bean is kind of um, <laughs> uh, eclipsing the top there uh, something like that and then um, since I'm going beyond the section I'm going to go into section and hit overflow hidden just to make sure we don't have any kind of layout issues um, and that is pretty much kind of like the top heading part here um, the reason I used viewport uh, for this image instead of like a fixed pixel width is because as we scroll this in that image is going to get smaller and smaller and kind of uh, respond to the width of the browser okay then, not inside the container, um, but in the section, we're going to add a collection list. And let's go ahead and link it to products. So I've uh, previously went in and added all of our products um, so that you wouldn't have to watch me do that. <laughs> and I do want to sort by date added or created because um, I want Yemen um, to be the first one. It's going to be our, our guinea pig, if you will. And then with the... Um, collection list we're going to call this a uh, product grid and i know that it's 60 pixels away from the heading here and there are 30 pixels of padding on either side um, because these are cards and we want them to be pretty big we want them to make a strong impression on the user i'm not using a container so no matter what um, the product cards will fill up the entire width of the browser. Um, then with that same CSS class selected, I'm going to hit grid. And I know that I want 30 pixels of padding in between the columns and 60 pixels of padding between the cards. And then I want three columns. And we can go ahead and delete that last row because it'll automatically add the rows for us. Uh, as needed for the um, collection items. Um, all right, and then we're going to do a couple of things. So um, I like to leave these collection items alone. It's kind of personal preference. So I'm going to add a div block and call this a product wrapper. And then I want to add two things in the product wrapper. First is a product card. Oops. Sorry, I need to be doing that here. There we go. And then, um, not in the product card itself, but going back up to the product wrapper, I'm gonna add a div block and call this um, drawer wrapper. So you can kind of notice if you look here, there's two different div blocks. Or if you look over here um, un under product wrapper, there's two things. And for right now, we can go ahead and hide our drawer wrapper. We're gonna be working the product card. All right, so with the product card, we're going to be adding an image, the title of the coffee, and the price. And I want to talk about three strategies for how to do these images. Um, one is the image field, one is a background image, and then one is a image field but with a little bit of uh, custom code. <laughs> so, um, so the first strategy is using the image field. And essentially what I do is just... Um, Go ahead and add this image here and then link it to the CMS and call it a day. The problem is that I'm kind of assuming that the client has 
some way to edit these photos and they'll always upload photos in this same exact ratio, the one-to-one -one square ratio. And uh, my experience has been that you just can't expect clients to do that. Um, we kind of have to make it a little bit more foolproof for them. Um, so if you know that the client is pretty technologically savvy and that they maybe even have access to high-end editing software or whatever it is, um, it may be that you can get away with just using that image field. Uh, but I found that, you, like I said, you have to make it more foolproof. The second way you can do it is use a background image. So create a div block. I'll kind of show you here. Uh, create a div block. Uh, just for the sake of explanation, I'll call this um, uh, um, ratio one to one. Okay, and then width is going to be 100%. Height is actually going to be zero, and padding is going to be 100%. And then uh, we're going to add a background image, set it to cover, do not text from the middle. And then all I have to do is get background image and select my product image. Okay, so now we have the images. The issue with this, and uh, oops, I just noticed that the coffee bean is overlapping the first product card, but um, you know what, I kind of like it, but um, I, I want the product cards to be selectable, and uh, since this is overlapping the product cards, it's actually gonna make it, uh, this, this overlapping section is not gonna be clickable because the image is on top of um, the grid. Let's go to product grid, set this position to relative, and that will push the beans behind the product grid. Okay. Um, so the issue with the background image strategy is that um, we don't have access to alt text. So alt text is um, like if I click on this, hit on settings, I can add alt text. So um, image of a coffee beans strewn about. <laughs> okay. And um, they have two purposes. The first and most important is screen readers. Uh, so if you're visually impaired and you're going through this site, um, the screen reader, obviously, uh, um, the image will, will not be seen by somebody who's visually impaired. And so the screen reader will pull the alt text and read it as a part of going through the website. And so it's part of having an accessible site is to have alt text in your images. So if we use background image for these, it means that we're not being accessible. We're not making it easy for somebody who's visually impaired to go through the site. Secondly, um, alt text is good for SEO because if we happen to mention um, any of our keywords like coffee, um, then it's going to help us to rank better in organic uh, search results. Um, that should be secondary to making it easy for somebody who's visually impaired to go through the site, but it is a concern. Okay, and then third, um, the reason that uh, I don't prefer not to use background images is that uh, we don't get to take advantage of Webflow's source set technology, <laughs> where basically, um, depending on the size of the browser, it serves up the most appropriately sized image. So on mobile, um, Webflow will serve a smaller version of the image than it will on desktop. On desktop, it'll serve up a larger image so that it's um, nice high definition. Um, so uh, by using background image, we don't get to take advantage of any of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is uh, actually just get rid of the background. And we're going to try our second strategy. And we're going to make it position relative. And then inside of this ratio one one, I'm going to add an image element. Um, and let's go ahead and get the image so that we can see what we're doing a little bit. And um, you can see that we can either write custom alt text, but that will be alt text for every single photo, or we can get alt text from products. And I didn't, I could have added a field that would be specifically for the alt text, but I'm just going to use the name for now. And then. Um, I'm going to get, so you can see that currently they're all different sizes. <laughs> um, so I'm going to call this image 100 because I'm going to set it to position absolute full and 100% by 100%. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to, to ratio 
one, one, and make sure that's relative. Okay, perfect. So now my images are all the right ratio, but you can tell that some of them are um, really ugly and that they've been stretched or shrunken to fit inside of the boundaries of um, our ratio box. So what we can do is, like I said, we can add a little bit of custom code. And um, so we're gonna add our style tag here. And that means that it's telling the browser, hey, this is CSS. We're gonna call that image 100 CSS class that we created, opening and closing brackets. And then we're gonna use object fit cover. And if I did that right, all of our images are now um, showing correctly. And that object fit cover, essentially what it's doing is it's kind of the same thing as a background cover uh, for background images, uh, but it's applying it to uh, um, how the object fits inside of its parent element. Um, you can also do contain um, and some other things if you wanna look it up. Um, but anyways, uh, what that means is now we, we have our images displaying, um, no matter what the client uploads, it's gonna um, be in the right uh, image ratio. We get to have all those benefits that we talked about, like all text and source set and all that good stuff. So, all right, inside of the product card, let's keep going. We're gonna add a new div block. And um, this is where you, uh, I wanna encourage you to think about, okay, how can I, build CSS classes that can reuse over and over and over again. And so I could call this like product caption wrapper or something like that. But I know that I want to use Flexbox space between um, to position the elements. And so instead of naming it caption wrapper, I'll name it flex between so that if I needed to, I could reuse the same element over and over and over again. Um, and then uh, set it to horizontal and space between. All right, and then let's add a essentially two text blocks elements. Okay, so the first one is going to be the name of the coffee, and the second one is going to be the price. Uh, next, um, with uh, ratio one one selected, um, let's go ahead and click into the symbol and sketch here and figure out how much spacing it is. And it's 20 pixels of margin bottom. There we go. Okay, and then let's go ahead and style this stuff. Um, I think what I might do is um, since this is a heading two, and these coffees are pretty important, um, I may switch to using a heading and use heading three and get rid of this guy. Um, and then style the H3 here. Uh, so I wanna set this to zero. I wanna set this to zero. And then let's get the styling of this guy. So he's 22, 30 extra bold. He's 22. Uh, let's do 1.5 M or something like that. Whoops. 1.5. There we go. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay. And then with the price, I don't know if this has a special, uh, oh, okay, I guess it does. Okay, so um, let's name this price, 22 pixels, 1.5 M, and it is medium. Uh, I think we can just stick with normal and that's fine. Okay, and then we forgot to assign this to uh, name in products. Okay. Awesome. 
Um, I think that means that we're done with the product grid. Let me just double check. Okay, um, I think it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and preview what we've done. Um, <laughs> you can see that um, on my screen, which is like, uh, I guess this is 1900, 1920 pixels wide. Uh, these cards are pretty big, <laughs> but um, I like that. I like when uh, your products are nice and big and the photos are easy to see. Um, so this is looking good. And maybe the last thing I'll do is with image, with product card selected, I'm gonna add a pointer cursor so that the user knows this is a clickable element. So now when I hover over the entire card, um, it's a clickable element. All right, so that ends part one. And the next section, we're gonna be building out the drawer, and then we're gonna be using animation to make it all function uh, together and make it look like one of those flyout drawers. Welcome back to part two, where we're going to be building out the drawer and then using animation to slide it in and out. And the first thing we're going to do is actually limit how many of these product cards are displayed. I just learned the hard way that since we're using the CMS and there's technically, uh, I think, nine or ten of these um, product cards, um, if I added the product drawer and I started working on it, there would technically be uh, ten iterations of that drawer since there are 10 CMS collection items. So to kind of add the drawer, I need to temporarily limit um, how many of these um, items I'm allowing uh, Webflow to show. So I'm going to show one only. And then again, in the future, we'll just add, we'll just take away that limit so that all the cards show up. But for now, it's just letting us work on one at a time. All right, so now that we've got the product card done, we can work on the product drawer. I'm going to take off that display um, over or er, display hidden, and we're going to set it to position fixed and full. Um, with fixed, what that means is that no matter where we scroll on the site, um, this drawer wrapper is always going to be uh, here in view, and that's what we want. We don't want that as the user scrolls, the content inside of the drawer disappears. We want it to always be in view. Um, the next thing we're going to do is set it to flex, horizontal is fine, and uh, all of these settings are fine. And the reason that we did that is we're going to add two div blocks um, inside of our drawer wrapper. So if I click here in the body, you'll notice that drawer wrapper is selected. So the drawer wrapper is sitting on top of everything. I could even go ahead and set a high Z index of like 99 or something like that, just to make sure it's sitting on top of all of the content. And then um, let's name these div blocks. So this first one here, we're gonna call um, wrapper close and set it to expand. And then with this one here, we're gonna call this drawer. <laughs> and it's gonna be set to, um, uh, let's do a minimum width 50 viewport width. And we'll set it to don't shrink or grow. And that's going to ensure that it's at least 50% of the width of the browser. But if it needs to grow again, just like we did with the section, it's going to grow um, to make sure that the content can fit inside of it. And then we've got a, not the text color, but the background color is going to be our uh, tan color here. And we've got a texture for our drawer. Um, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it on not fixed, and that should be fine. All right. Um, okay. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do with the drawer. Whoops, my uh, sketch file slid to the right here. Let me move it over. And I want to make sure I get the proportions correct here. So I know that there is 80 pixels of padding top and bottom, and I'm gonna ignore the close icon here for a second. Um, and there's 80 pixels of padding on the y-axis. All right. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, 
and head add a heading and we'll make the, call this h3 um, and we're going to get text from the cms it's going to be the name so you see yemen red haraz pulled up and um, we already set the styling for h3 here um, and i want this to be an h3 because again it's under the globally sourced coffee section so we're trying to create a nice um, hierarchy to our content but the styling is different so but that's okay we'll just call this drawer h3 um, and that way we can give it a little bit of different styling and it's going to be 38 1.5 um, 38 uh, here we go letter spacing 1.5 um, and uh, all caps Okay, that looks good. Um, there's a number of ways uh, to do this line down here. So I could have this wrapped inside of a div block and then um, the <laughs> there would be a border bottom or I could just simply add a div block just below this and we'll call this HR. And um, it's going to be width 100%. And we'll give it a border bottom. I believe it's this nice brown color. And I think that looks good. Um, let me just double check the spacing here. Uh, there's 20 pixels of, oh, sorry, 30 pixels of spacing um, on most of them. So let's go ahead and add that. 30, 30, and so I do want to make sure this is set to zero. Okay. Then inside of the drawer, I'm going to add an image, and we're going to get the image from the country image in our CMS, and of course it's way too big. Um, so uh, let's give it a combo class and just call it country image. And um, it's going to have a height of 300. And we're going to use auto margin. Whoops. Um, apparently that didn't work. So let's go ahead and set it to text align center. Um, actually, instead of doing that, because all of this is left aligned, I think what I'll do is add div block, place the image in there and then text align center the parent div block. And there we go. Um, then inside, uh, oh, luckily that worked because uh, this stuff down here is center aligned. Um, so inside of that same text align center box, we can add a text block and call it overline and then another text block. And then this is going to be the country of origin. Oops. I think that's right. Uh, actually, that's the region. Region of origin. And then um, this is going to be the country of origin. OK. And then with the country image selected, let's give 20 pixels of padding on, sorry, of margin on the bottom, just to push the content down. And then uh, this is going to be a CSS class that we use throughout the drawer. So we can just call this drawer text. And unless I'm mistaken, it's 22. It is our kind of darker color here. Um, or actually, that's not. Um, Oops, okay. So luckily we can save that drawer text. We can just delete this. And let's add a new heading and we'll use an H4. Get text from country of origin. Um, and then we can style our H4 here. This is 32. I think everything else looks good. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, so copy the HR line and paste it into the copy drawer and it'll show up below the content there. Um, and you see that like, as I scroll, uh, the drawer is staying fixed, which is exactly what we want. All right, next is um, adding this content down here. And so I'm gonna add a div block and call it two columns. And um, let's use the um, typographic column feature here. Um, and then inside of this, we'll add two div blocks and just for this to work, they need to be inline block. So let's go ahead and add that there. Okay. Um, they're showing up side by side, but that's because of the inline block setting. But as we add content, this will shuffle over to the right hand column. Okay. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I changed my mind. <laughs> Um, I think I'm just going to get rid of that and make these uh, width 50%. Um, so they should be side by side now. Okay. And then let's add a text block. Actually, I'm going to add a new div block. And these div blocks will kind of hold uh, these pieces of these little stats of content. And the first one is farm text and now we can use drawer text so we kind of started getting it ready um, so let's click on that 22 1 extra bold all caps And then get text, and this is going to be the. Oops, can't quite see what's going on. I think if I select it here, I'll be able to see the whole drop down field. Um, and this is the farm. Perfect. And since I added that div block here, let's go ahead and call it like stat wrapper. I can add three of these, I think and then make sure that the same spacing is below all of them. Um, okay, now we're running into an issue and it's actually really good that we ran into this issue so that I can show you guys how to do this, but I'm currently trying to scroll down on my mouse and I can't. And that's because this uh, element is position fixed. So I can't scroll down to see what text this is. So if I click on drawer and set the uh, overflow to scroll, it's going to let me scroll down even though this is a fixed element um, so I can see the info down here. And that's really important to um, set that just in case that your content uh, exceeds the height um, of the browser. Um, so again, we're running into that. <laughs> it's the third time we talk about um, overflowing content. So anyways, um, next is variety. And I'm gonna actually go over here to change this. Uh, set it there. And then I think this is altitude, unless I'm mistaken, altitude. Oops. And there it is. All right, last but not least is notes. Um, so let's go ahead and copy the wrapper and then uh, click on the second inline block here and add it there. And for whatever reason, I think I'm just going to use Fluxbox for this. Um, so we'll call this two column flex. There we go. And um, there needs to be 30 pixels of spacing right here. So I think we can just take drawer or stat wrapper and add that 30 pixels of spacing there. Okay. Great. Um, next up is, um, so for this, uh, for this, um, the notes, 
uh, I actually used a rich text block, and I want to show you why. Um, so if I go to add our rich text, get text from products, and do notes. Um, and then call it uh, drawer text. Okay. Now, um, if I had um, added just a text field and added these four elements, whenever I added it here, it would just show up as four words side by side. Um, so the text field doesn't recognize line breaks. Um, but rich text fields do. So if I go into the CMS quickly and click on Yemen, you'll notice that, uh, oops, let me take off bold. Um, you'll notice that there are line breaks that I introduced and in description, it just won't let me do that. So we have to use a rich text block uh, for this particular section. Um, and let me take that off. And then I'm actually gonna um, go to preview. Let's copy this. Because I need to take off the um, I need to take off the CMS. Oh my word. Where is my content? <laughs> um, okay. Um, Let's go ahead and delete that temporarily. Add a rich text. There we go. Um, okay. And then call this drawer text. And now I can individually uh, access the paragraph, which is what I want to do. So I want to be able to click on all paragraphs nested inside of drawer text. And it needs to be not Roboto but it needs to be darker grotesque and it shouldn't be that 60% gray it needs to be our full black and now it's looking exactly like what we need it to look like. So now we can go ahead and um, uh, get text from products. There we go. Um, then let's go ahead and copy this HR line. And with this particular line, since this has that um, 20 pixels of padding at the bottom, let's go ahead and click it and do a combo class of margin chop 10 only. And now that spacing here is correct. All right, and then the last thing is to add a paragraph. Um, and it's kind of bugging me that this drawer is growing. So I think maybe instead of minimum, I may go ahead and just make this 50 VW uh, here so that uh, this paragraph doesn't grow. And then um, one thing I want to do is, well, let's go ahead and um, align it to the CMS uh, description. Um, but it needs to be dark paragraph. Whoops. Um, I don't like it to have that 60% opacity on top of this tan color because uh, it doesn't have enough contrast. Um, okay. So unless I'm mistaken, I think we've got all of the content and we just need to add the close icon. Um, okay. So let's do that. Um, so inside of our drawer, we're gonna add close. And we're gonna call this a close icon wrapper. And with drawer selected, let's make this as position relative so that we can uh, absolutely position the close icon in the right hand corner. And we're gonna set it to 40. Right now you can't see it because <laughs> it's just an empty div block. Okay. And this is gonna be 64 pixels square, so we can do that here. Then we're gonna add a border of our black color. Um, so I click off, I think you should be able to see it now. And we're gonna make the radius 
50% so that it's a perfect circle. Then we're going to make it flexbox so that we can add an image inside of it. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to export um, the circle. <laughs> so let me quickly uh, grab these two um, icon close and export this. Sorry about this, guys. Um, I thought I had exported it already, um, but apparently not. Okay, there we go. And then um, I do want to set the dimensions here. And now we've got our close icon. And um, we can even set a hover um, thing if we want. Uh, so maybe on hover, uh, background takes on uh, this light color and give it a transition of background color. All right, so if I preview this, uh, now we've got that nice transition color and I can scroll up and down to see more of the drawer. Uh, maybe the only thing we need to do is give this the pointer cursor. Um, so that people know it's a clickable element. There we are. All right, so that ends the second part of this tutorial. In the third section, we're going to um, use the interactions um, feature in Webflow to make this drawer slide in and out. All right, guys, welcome back to section three of this uh, tutorial. Um, it's actually the following morning and I have a lot more energy because I was recording around 10 o'clock last night and I got too tired. <laughs> but um, anyways, what we're doing now is uh, we're going to be using Interactions 2.0 to animate this drawer in and out of view. So the first thing we're going to do is actually, um, I've already <laughs> done it here, but uh, in our collection, we're going to limit how many items the collection is displaying. Um, if you look at this shadow in the middle, you'll notice that when I limit this to one, the shadow got a lot softer. And that's because uh, there are, since this is a fixed element, there are actually really eight or nine, however many party cards there are, there are nine drawers all sitting on top of each other. And that, um, especially the larger the collection gets, it can slow down Webflow and just make it a little bit painful to do all these interactions. So I recommend temporarily limiting uh, how many um, items there are to one, and then removing that once you're done. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is let's talk about um, uh, the triggers for our animation. So um, in short, the rule is that the element that triggers the animation to close the drawer cannot be nested inside of the element that triggers the drawer to open. Okay, so let me give you an example of that. This close icon, we're going to want this to be a trigger element to close the drawer, of course. Well, if this were nested inside of the trigger element that opens the drawer, the drawer would actually never close when this is clicked. Because even though I'm clicking on this element specifically, I'm also clicking by clicking on this, all of the parent elements that precede it. Um, and so it would continue to register that both the close and the open animations were all both being clicked and it would never close the drawer. So they have to be sibling elements. Um, that's why uh, if you look at product wrapper, product card, which is going to be our trigger element to open the card, is a sibling element of drawer wrapper. Um, you could change that. So you could, let's say you just wanted the image itself to be the trigger. Uh, well, I could move drawer wrapper inside a product card and it could be a sibling of the image. Uh, either way, as long as the close uh, trigger elements are not nested inside of the opening trigger elements. All right, enough theory, let's get into this. So with product card selected, let's go to our animations panel and start a new one based off of mouse click. And then start an animation. Uh, oh, I was uh, working on this a few minutes ago, uh, just to practice. And we're gonna call this a drawer open. 
And this is part's gonna go pretty quickly actually. With drawer wrapper selected, that's everything uh, on screen here. I'm gonna click move and I wanna set it to 101 VW. And that means that it's moving to the right the uh, 101% of the viewport width, in other words, off screen. And I want that to be the initial state of where the drawer is. Um, so I'm gonna click set as initial state and you'll notice that under class, it says only siblings with this class. That's exactly what we want. And then we also want the opacity to be set at 0%. Um, we're gonna add a hide show, and you're gonna see why in a second, but it needs to be set to flex because uh, the wrapper was initially set to flexbox. Um, but in the closing animation, I'm gonna hide um, the drawer uh, using display none. And so I need to make sure that uh, the hide show is set to flex on open. Then we're gonna move it back into view. So I'm gonna set this to zero VW. Okay, so it's now back in view, but you can't see it because we need to set the opacity to 100%. All right, so now we've animated everything in. Let's go ahead and click these last two elements. And uh, 0.5 seconds is probably fine, but let's use ease. And if we test it out, whoop, that is a nice, smooth animation. All right, we can also um, uh, what I'll do is draw a wrapper. Let's go ahead and hide this. And we can test this out by clicking on there and our, our drawer is working as it should. All right, so let's go ahead and set this back to Flexbox. And then we need to set up our animations to close the drawer. Um, so there's gonna be two trigger elements. One of course is this close icon over here on the top right. And then wrapper close is also gonna be a trigger element. And that's because a lot of people assume if they click off of the drawer, the drawer will close. Um, so uh, this is technically a element. Uh, it's not actually, it's blocking the content below, but on click, it's gonna slide the drawer right back out. All right, so let's go to animations. On mouse click, we're gonna start an animation and uh, we're gonna duplicate drawer open and set it to drawer close. Uh, we're gonna delete these two, move the hide show down below, and then let's go ahead and, whoops, uh, style the animation. So instead of going to zero, we need to set it to 101 because we want it to move out of view again. We need to set the opacity to 0%, and we need to set the drawer wrapper to hide. Okay, now nothing happened to the uh, elements here. And the reason is because this is still set to only siblings, but a uh, drawer wrapper is not a sibling of drawer close. Um, and neither is the close icon. So really we need to set this to all elements with this class. Now you see that everything moved out of the way. Um, so I can close that. And now we can just do mouse click on the close icon here, start an animation and I can use the exact same uh, animation that we created. All right, so um, let me go back up to drawer wrapper. And let's go ahead and hide that. Let's click um, on the collection and let's remove our, oops, limit items. Uh, my computer's being just a tad sluggish. <laughs> I think it's waking up like me. Um, preview this, and if I open that, click the drawer opens, and if I click on the X, it closes, click on this card, uh, it opens, click on the body, and it closes. So our drawer is working just as we expected it to, it's doing what we need to, and working beautifully. And we can scroll down uh, to see the rest of the content, and there we are. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoyed learning about how to work with drawers. They're so useful. And um, if you have any ideas for the next video, just let me know in the comments below. And I'll, I'll consider that and I'll be thinking about what would be a, a fun video to do. Um, but anyways, um, also want to mention, uh, I've been so encouraged by your guys' comments. So please keep letting me know what you enjoy about the videos. And please subscribe and um, make sure that you're aware of 
any other videos that are uploaded uh, so that we can all keep learning uh, about Webflow together. So anyways, hope you guys have a good one and I'll catch you in the next one.